Hello and welcome to the Nighthawk Racing hashtag F1RST Season 3 Round 4 and this week we are at Daytona Road Course and it's my pleasure to introduce Kirk who will be the co-coms this evening. Hello Kirk, how are you doing? Good, Sarah. Thank you for having me back for another round. I'm certain we're going to see lots of incidents and uh, plenty of on-track action here tonight at Daytona. Yeah, I'm sure we will. So just a little bit of event information before I hand back over to Kirk. We'll go through the format a little bit more in detail. But uh, we have a 10-race championship, and obviously we're on round four tonight. We've had three previous rounds of spectacular racing, which has been split across two lobbies, the red and the blue lobby. And tonight we'll be covering the red lobby. We've had over 30 drivers registered for this championship. And just to give you a basic event format, we've had the sprint race and then we'll have qualifying. And then the final event of the, the night will be the feature race. So obviously we've rescheduled Dragon Trail Gardens till the end of the season due to the, the football and England didn't bring it home. But um, yes, tonight we are on to for the first of two trips to Daytona. But I'll hand over to Kirk, who will talk to you a little bit more about it. So starting off tonight, we are going to have a 10 lap sprint race. Uh, this will be a rolling start to hopefully avoid too much trouble on the first lap. It will be uh, times four for tire wear with times three fuel usage. Um, you start. It'll start at eighty five percent fuel, so hopefully not. No one needing any here tonight as well as only being on light damage so if you do pick up any damage on the first lap um, it should repair itself um, and we're going for the grid order we do it in reverse average point order therefore if you do if you have missed around as a few drivers may have have already already um, they won't be able to boost their starting position within the sprint race um, after that, we will be going on to qualifying. Qualifying, um, you it will be ten minutes. Um, it will it will uh, obviously be a dry session, so our wet weather rule will not come into play tonight. Um, and there is a caveat to where whatever tire you set your fastest lap on is the tire you start uh, the feature race on. So whether it be softs, mediums, or the hard tire. And then after qualifying, we'll be going on to the feature race. Uh, feature race is our main event of the evening. Um, obviously, we if you see on the right, we do have a rule uh, where if the moisture bar goes over a third full, you ha um, the tire rule goes out the window. Um, but that will not be in effect tonight as we don't get rain at Daytona. Um, and then I'll move on to the left. Uh, so... It is, as I said, um, the the tire you start the you set your fastest qualifying lap on is the tire you start the race on. This allows for a lot of strategy, uh, as in if you're not one of the quicker drivers, but uh, you want that fast starting tire, you'd qualify on the softs. Maybe if you are one of the faster drivers, like a uh, Swizzy, uh, Sophia, or Acadia the Kai, you might find yourself qualifying on the medium tire to give yourself the op extra options further on into the race. Um, you have to use two different compounds of tires. That's where the strategy comes into play. Um, so if so, if you start the soft, you have to use the medium or the hard. Or if you start the medium, you have to use the soft or hard. Um, fuel is set to 100%. So our drivers will be starting on with full tanks of fuel. I, I know this has caught me <laughs> caught me out a few times personally in the uh, red lobby um, with the grid grid uh, start straight. I know I don't sometimes hold the handbrake down and they get a silly or uh, penalty like that, Sarah. Cool. So before we go and uh, talk about the drivers in a little bit more detail we're just going to have a quick refresh of the point system and as you can see in the spring race which will be the first event first place can get 22 points all the way down to 16th there's one point on offer and if the driver if a driver gets the fastest lap during the sprint race they get an extra one point so uh, always you know going for go for the fastest lap you get a bonus point 
But in the feature race, the points are almost doubled with first place coming home with 45 points and then all the way down to 16th with three points. And again, there's points up for the fastest lap. So if a driver gets the fastest lap in the feature race, they get two bonus points. So uh, like I say, points across the board. So uh, it's worth, you know, sticking out and sticking the race um, to the end. Absolutely. Um even if you aren't having the greatest of races in either sprint or feature race, always an extra point if you got the pace up for grabs, if you if you can get them. So starting from third, well, eleventh, our sprint race tonight we have our very own flying Finn in Swizzy. Um, probably one of the favourites to win tonight feature race. Although he has a bit of work to do, he wants to win the sprint race here tonight. But I'm certainly wouldn't put him put it past him as a he is a absolutely top notch, phenomenally fast driver. It's like in P10, maybe someone who could, you could possibly say is a little bit out of place. One of our very own admin team and co-founders. We have Midnight ISO in P10 again. Another on his day, or should we say just around his favourite track of Austria. It can be a menace who can challenge the very top. Um, then we have Joker in P9, um, making his it, second so his second race, I believe, after after debuting in Monza and doing very well. Um, then we have Sophie in P8 in that uh, in that red and pink. I want to say red and pink Ferrari, a very interesting color choice on that Ferrari. Uh, she's taking up P8. We have another one of our admin team. We have Pedro in the uh, light blue. We race as one Mercedes AMG. Um, I'm sure he'll be looking forward to taking advantage of any drama that may arise as he, as on his day he's usually a podium or top five contender. And then in P6, uh, we have Katie Kai. Possibly a little bit of a disappointing start to the season. We've seen him unfortunately retire from a few rounds this season. Um, but I'm sure uh, if he can keep his head in the game and do as well as we've seen him drive before, there's no reason why he also could not be another contender to win today's feature race. And I'm sure he'll definitely be looking at moving forward tonight in the uh, sprint race, Sarah. Yes, I'm sure he will indeed. And uh, thank you for running through those drivers and then next up we have coach in that that very distinctive mclaren that we uh, all know and love and uh, over the past few events you know he's uh he's picked up some some valuable points in the championship and uh, i'm sure he'll be looking to do the same again tonight next up we then have lb racing in that mclaren and uh very similar to coach you know over the past few events he's been picking up some crucial points and um, I'm sure he'll be looking to kind of capitalise on this P4 start, see if he can try and get in or around the podium and uh, and stay there. But next up, we then have Sophia in that Corvette. <laughs> the Corvette, definitely, you know, at home at Daytona. So again, I'm sure Sophia will be looking to capitalise on the American power of that Corvette. And talking about American power, just in front, we have Hartman also in the Corvette and... Uh, you never know, we might see two Corvette, two American cars on the podium in the sprint race. And starting on pole for the fourth round of the Nighthawk racing at Daytona, we have Kulios in that Subaru. So um, we saw him win a high speed ring uh, starting from pole. So can he do the same again? We will see. But uh, that is all the drivers. And Kirk, we're at Daytona, obviously, as I say, you know, uh, the American cars will try and will be trying their best to you know make um you know the Corvettes fans proud. But what do you think of the track itself? Is it a, a favorite of yours, or have any facts about it? Probably a lot of people have heard of Daytona before. It's very very famous within the motorsport scene. Which events as the twenty four hours of a Daytona and a, a Daytona five hundred NASCAR event. Um, it's obviously a very famous circuit, a very recognisable layout, obviously for most of the lap you are on that iconic Daytona Oval with a little infield section and a pretty fast uh, fast chicane on the back straight. Um, it's also certainly a track with many op overtaking opportunities, whether it's at 
uh, either of the two hairpins on the infield section or to after getting a slipstream slingshot off the final corner corner whether you look at making a move into turn one or, so, or even if you get a good run onto the oval off the in infield section you might even be able to make a move up into that chicane um and i'm possibly thinking maybe we might see one or two moves uh on the final few laps on the uh run up to the line so we might even get a photo finish at some point sarah yeah that's potentially on the cards i know the drivers like to give us a photo finish so it's yeah definitely on the cards but i think it's a track you know it's uh although it may look easy i think it will be difficult for some of the cars obviously some of the cars that may be lacking on you know um on speed it might affect them especially on those banked corners and like I say, it may look easy, but the the twisty turning, especially that really fast chicane around the back, I think it could catch a few people out. But uh, all this talk about the track, I don't know about you, but I'm now excited to go and watch uh, the sprint race and see how all the drivers got on. Absolutely, Sarah. I'm sure we're going to see a lot of action and uh, maybe one or two mistakes on the drivers, obviously getting to learn the track for the first time. Okay, so taking us away for our sprint race tonight, we have Coolios lining up in first place with Hartman and Sophia taking second and third place respectively. So as we go off, we are green, we are underway, we are, we are racing. A very good start from Hartman as he looks to go around the outside of Coolios in towards the first corner. Can he outbreak Coolios? No, we can't. Coolios is taking very ambitious, but he has gone and outbroke himself, gone deep. Come on, that has cost him two positions, dropping him down into third place. And Harman <laughs> giving Coolios little to no room as Coolios touches the grass. It's uh, not been the greatest of starts for Coolios. As we see, LB Lewis trying to go around the outside of Hartman. Hartman being able to hold him off. And now Coolios being put under more pressure from KD Dekai. KD Dekai going around the outside of Coolios. On this infield, uh, Kulios obviously again now losing the spot to coach. As coach looks up the inside, as we see Hartman going the track further up in front of the pack. That is obviously not the start he would like to have. As we see Sophie, Sophie getting on the exit, touching the grass, and getting all kinds of squirrely on the exit, um, exit of the happen. So leading us around for halfway round the first lap, we have Sophia in first who has got quite a healthy margin to lb lewis in second with kd kai taking third place coach in fourth pedro in fifth busy up into p6 coolios in seventh um obviously not the greatest starts for coolios now dropping down to eighth place is the uh, loses another position to joker fiddler iso in p9 we not the greatest starts from him i'm not sure quite is what's happened Sophia and Hartman taking up the final two positions. A very exciting start start to the race, Sarah. Uh, as we as uh, both LB LB Lewis and Katie Kai running side by side up into up as K as B Lewis, shall I say, is getting back into 16 of Katie Kai to possibly have another up up into turn one, but uh, think so much better of it, Sarah. Yeah, it couldn't be more as uh, I was just on midnight there and uh, it looked like <laughs> Kulios just tucked up behind Joker looked to try and reclaim that spot and uh, potentially need to let midnight through so um, yeah like you say obviously Kulios starting from pole it, it just shows you how close all the drivers really are you know he made that one small mistake and uh, lost quite a few positions so yeah unfortunate stuff for Kulios but I'm sure he'll be uh, looking to try and make up as many places as he can but yeah, across the board, all the drivers, you know, really close to each other, which is really nice to see. And, uh, you know, on to lap number two. This is where, you know, the, the nerves will be settling a little bit, as, uh, I mean, Ooh. most of people are aware. Is, as we Ooh. see LB Lewis possibly having a hand in helping spinning coach round. Uh, obviously, one that series are probably going to have to have a look in, uh, and it's never really what you want to see out on the track, is it, Sarah? No, but uh, literally, as I was just saying about the, the nerves, um, you know, the sprint race is usually where a lot of drivers have that kind of more of a little bit more of a practice. So these things happen as Kulios goes into the inside of coach and gets the move done into the chicane. So Kulios already up a position and uh, it was quite a good move through that chicane. You know, he knew that he could make the move stuck, uh, stick 
and unfortunately Coach losing a position there as Midnight is just tucking up right behind him at the moment, getting in that slipstream across this uh, banked corner here. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's such a difficult track purely because of the, the banked corners and kind of the twisty turny nature of this track. As uh, it looks like Coach has uh, burned a penalty there, which is, again has let a few drivers through. But um, obviously we're only on lap number three. There's still quite a few laps to go. And I'm sure, you know, like I say, the drivers will be getting in the, you know, all the data to help them in the qualifying and the feature. Just look at his battle for second place between Katie the Kite, LB Lewis and Swizzy. And it seems like Katie the Kite was getting his elbows out there ever so slightly. Uh, a little bit of rubbing, but uh, rubbing is racing. <laughs> uh, P. Swizzy looking up the inside of LB Lewis. Uh, making that move look quite simple there in the end. Squizzy, obviously starting from 11th in this race, is already up into third, and, it, and even and it, we're only on the third lap, Sarah. And it certainly looks like um, he wants to make that move on Katie Kai sooner rather than later, as he uh, tucks up right up behind Kai's Corvette. Yeah, we all know how uh, Swizzy doesn't like to wait <laughs> too long behind other drivers. He you know, he always manages to find a way through into that top three and, uh, you know, potentially the top step of the podium. Although it does look like Sophia's got quite a run on uh, the rest of the drivers at the moment. So it's going to be, you know, potentially kind of maybe a last lap battle between the two. But, I mean, across the board, uh, I'm impressed, you know, all the drivers are doing uh, really well on uh, the first couple of laps. As we see, everyone's kind of tucked in behind each other, getting that slip stream. And you can see the sparks flying off some of the other, some of the cars. It's a very impressive drive from Sophia so far. Um, what should I say? Um, she again pulling out a very very solid gap to the rest of the chasing pack. Obviously, once obviously starting this race in third place, and obviously getting to the front and avoiding all trouble as Katie Car gets very sideways exit the first corner and seems to find the barrier which isn't going to do his race any favours and allows Swizzy to get out in front into P2 now and uh, also allows the likes of LB Lewis to take advantage and so it just loses those two positions Sarah. Yeah and it looks like Pedro gets very is, wide. Uh, yeah uh, literally as you were just about to say KJ the car going wide again which uh, does let Pedro get a little bit closer and potentially looking to overtake him here. Although Coach as well, so going free wide into this corner here. Pedro slightly kind of breaking that a little bit earlier just to make sure there's no casualties. But all three get <laughs> through the corner. Didn't expect that. But um, yeah, Pedro tucks behind Co uh, Joker, sorry. And uh, we'll be looking to benefit from that slight mistake from KD the Kai there. Although it does look KD the Kai going for that kind of lower corner there on the banked corner and does Pedro does lose a position again but oh a little tap to Joker and uh, that does lose him quite a bit of time if it's caught taking the low line Sarah um, as you see Kaya. obviously we're starting to recover from that slight mistake he has uh, claiming back both of those positions he lost to Pedro and Joker now looking at possibly challenging LB Lewis heading into the first corner as he tucks up behind that parent is gaining, gaining, gaining. Is he going to go to the inside or is he going to go to the outside? It looks like he's going trying around the outside into the first corner. Can he outbreak the McLaren? He can't. You may be looking at getting a cutback or make in, making the overtake into turn four. As we go left, we go, oh, we go right, we go left. Kane kind of looks to go around the outside of LB Lewis. Maybe a little bit of contact there. Uh, <laughs> LB Lewis held his line firm, but it allows Keith to kind of get a much better cutback on at the exit of turn four. And uh, quite simply drives around the outside of LB Lewis heading in towards this next hairpin. Is we look behind Joker. Looks possibly a little bit ambitious of a move there from Joker on LB Lewis, but uh, yeah, there ain't no move quite like a robust one, is there, Sarah? No, sometimes, you know, the, like you said earlier, Robin is racing. Uh, oh, as we see Harman making a slight mistake coming out of that corner there, which just lets coach through. But yeah, sometimes, you know, the rust moves, if they pay off, you know, they're, they're beneficial. But <laughs> sometimes, let's just say, not all robust moves 
uh, stick. So as long as the drivers are careful and don't trade too much paint, uh, it's all good. As we see a little battle forming here between coach Sophie Hartman and Midnight, it's a battle of who's going to break slightly later and it looks like Sophie breaking later of the bunch and manages to get past all, all three of them. So quite a good move and as you can see, oh, a little, oh, a big crash between Hartman and coach. So one for the stewards to look at as obviously it's uh, kind of a, a NASCAR style of crash there. Um, obviously on the banked corners but as we go back to the front of the grid we see LB Lewis still in third KD Dakai not too far in front but like you say Sophia is just kind of in a, a world of her own at the minute she's out front she knows she probably knows looking in a rear view mirror that Swizzy is uh, hot on her tail so it's not going to take too long between you know, for a battle between these two but uh, I'm sure they're enjoying the peace and quiet at the moment I was just looking at lap time and it looks like uh, Sophia was actually about uh, intense quicker than Swizzy last lap so that gap is actually opening up between the two drivers. Um, I just want to go back to what you said about LB Lewis. LB Lewis is in fourth with Kai in third place Sarah. Um, but I'm mean, just looking behind LB, LB Lewis, uh, the gap we want from 10th up. 10th to 4th, it seems like everybody really has a shout of uh, finishing, taking that 4th place away from Lewis, you know, that pack really isn't spreading out all that much between the drivers, even 6 laps in no, but it's, That's uh, definitely a good thing, you know it means that the battles uh, are on obviously we're over halfway into this uh, sprint race as Joker gets very sideways in the chicane there and does bunch up Pedro um, as we see just behind you know Sophie looking to benefit from the slight mistake from the two drivers there and it does look like because of that slight mistake from Joker and the avoiding action of Pedro Pedro does get a penalty so unfortunately that will slow him down and will let these two drivers go past and it might even let Kudos in on that inside line and goes past Pedro so Pedro unfortunately because of the avoiding action does lose quite a few positions as we see Joker um holding that fifth position of the of the on the using the inside line on Sophie be trying to make that cut back work but it doesn't quite work as she looks maybe going for a little late look up the inside but Joker reads it well uses it leaves her a little bit of space but uses the momentum of the outside line to maintain position um I don't think we've seen the end of this battle Sarah because uh, we've still got four laps to go as we see Sophia slip someone up the inside of Joker maybe giving him in them a little bit of contact to push him out wide you see not really what Joker would have wanted but this also allows Midnight Eyes to try and look around the outside of Joker Joker again just holding his line for now uh, forcing Midnight to wait a little bit longer to possibly take that position away from them Sarah yeah and uh Midnight using like all of the slipstream here but behind Joker, so um, he'll be looking to, to save a bit of fuel, but also to um, you know use that top end speed of that McLaren to try and make a move. Potentially, oh, as it, we see him touch the grass a little bit into the chicane, and uh, but although Midnight does lose a little bit of time to, to Joker here, but I'm sure he'll be looking to get back in that slipstream. But yeah, going back to that Joker and uh, Sophie move, you know potentially. Uh, Sophie just catching Joker out and uh, Joker having to take a slightly different line but a, a good move all in all from uh, the two Ferrari drivers and uh, like you say all the drivers remarkably kind of close to each other I'm sure Pedro will be looking to uh, get a few positions higher obviously due to um, maybe a few mistakes the avoiding action but um, I mean I mean <laughs> Swizzy and Sophia though you know even in the sprint race, which you know potentially they they're using this as their practice session. I mean, they're um, let's just say they're they're quite fast. And if this is the pace that they've got in the sprint race, I can uh, only imagine what their qualifying times will be. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you take fresh tyres and low, a lower fuel load, you can only imagine that they're flying. So it seems like Sophia's sitting quite comfortably in the. Uh, 
low 45. <laughs> Just for example, me in the uh, blue blue lobby, I was only in the uh, low 48, high 47. So she's probably running about three seconds faster than what I was running in the uh, sprint race. So uh, it certainly seems like we got a couple of aliens in this in this lobby, Sarah. A hundred percent, and uh, it looks like looking on board with the Ferrari drivers, it does look like that four five eight does suffer from a little bit higher tire wear. So, you know, it might be just enough to get him to the end of this sprint race, but it will be something they will have to think about in the feature race. Obviously, take that on board, and it might affect their strategy just that little bit. Um, as we see a potential mistake from, like from Joker. Joker there. It looks like going through the chicane, he just touched the grass grass, and he just spun at the rear round, dropping him to, or to the back of the pack. Um, looking uh, looking throughout the, our field now, it seems like uh, we kind of uh, just about found their comfort zones and we started to space out just that a little bit. Got our uh, first three drivers in their own world, let alone with uh, LB Lewis in four uh, being kept honest by the light of uh, both the Coolios and Pedro with Midnight, uh, Hartman and Joker rounding out the back of the field as we see Hartman losing it out of the hairpin uh, he's gone for a little bit of grass cut we call that one the good old Ziggy special Sarah yeah and uh, I was just on board with Pedro and Pedro going for a move on that hairpin on Coolios that gets the move done uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, uh, a little bit of a mistake there from uh, from Hartman. But I'm sure you know the a lot of the drivers in the sprint race they'll try and use the mistakes uh, to not well in order to make not to make the same mistakes in the future race or quali. Um, and at the end of the day, it, it is all data gathering, uh, as I always say. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously we've got two laps left well one lap at the end of this one but looking across the drivers it does look like you know <laughs> Swizzy and Sophia um, although like you said earlier you know Sophia kind of a got astronomical pace here Swizzy not being able to catch uh, and uh, obviously but Swizzy was on the back foot you know starting quite low down so It'd be interesting to see if they're just that little bit closer in the feature race because of qualifying. Absolutely. Um, was he going into qualifying? Um, it'd be interesting to see um, if they both choose to qualify on the same tyre or they uh, do a bit of alternative strategies to uh, try and one-up the other driver. Um, it seems like we've got a little battle brew brewing for fifth on this final lap, final lap here. Um, Sophie being forced to defend from Pedro and Coolios. Got a little bit sideways on the exit of the corner, which is really backed her up into Pedro. Um, Pedro, uh, obviously, we know uh, has got a lot of speed. He looks to go try and go around the outside of Sophie. Sophie just manages to hold the inside line, parks it on the apex, apex to give Pedro nowhere to go. Doing very well to just back him up a little bit into Coolios. Um, that 458 rear right looked absolutely toast. Um, it's interesting, is she going to be able to defend coming into the final chicane as we run around the banking for the final time? Joe looking to go around the outside of Sophie. Can he get that slingshot he's looking for towards the chicane? Yeah, we Looks to go round the outside to get the inside line for the second part of the chicane. Can he hold it there? No, he can't. S Sophie slides through that final chicane. Can she hold it? It looks like she will be able to hold it. Can Pedro get this slingshot towards the line as Sophie takes the win of this race, followed by Swizzy in second? As we stay on board with Pedro, is he gaining fast enough? It doesn't look like he is. Although he's being pushed along by Coolios. Coolios giving him that little bump he needs as he's now closing that gap to Sophie. He cl is closing. He's closing. He looks to go around the outside, but Sophie just manages to hold off and secure the P5 finish with Pedro in sixth. Even with the help of uh, Coolios there, Pedro just, just couldn't quite catch Sophie. It's line to error. No, it looked like, you know, going through that chicane. I just thought slightly better of it, you know, not going too wide into the 
into this game, but maybe in the future racing, he might try uh, it a little bit, see if it will pay off. But yeah, unfortunately, obviously that that pace of the Ferrari was just able to stay in front and uh, claim the win. Although you you were on a point there, you know, Kulios bumping Pedro just that little bit, and I reckon if there was one lap more. Kulios would uh, definitely been more more of a threat there. He was closing and closing on uh, Sophie and Pedro. So, yeah, I'm sure you know Kulios would be very happy that he was on the back of two very very fast drivers. Yeah, absolutely. Um, who would you think your driver of the sprint was, Sarah? Um, I think Sophia. Sophia is probably it for me. Yeah, I was going to say Sophia or LB Racing. I think he had a really good sprint race here. You know, just outside of yeah, the podium, obviously. but keeping, you know, keeping the podium drivers honest, you know. He was uh, on the back of them for, for a little bit, but he's also keeping the likes of, you know, Sophie, Kulios, Pedro behind him. I think the reason why it's Sophia for me is obviously she got towards the front and didn't look back. He just managed to actually outpace for the majority of the race uh, the charging uh, Mitsubishi of Swizzy. Swizzy, we don't often see him being outpaced as he has done here by Sophia. Um, but I can also see where you come from with LB, LB Lewis. Um, obviously holding E4, beating the likes of Midnight Iso, Pedro and Sophie in the Ferrari. Very impressive drive from the British driver. Yeah, and obviously just a mention to Coach as well. Uh, after that damage and that quite big crash that he had earlier on in the race, it was a retirement from him. Obviously uh, not nice to see him retire, but uh, understandable with probably the amounts of damage that he got from that big crash into the wall. Yeah, obviously you never really like to see it, but uh, obviously sometimes this stuff happens in race and obviously the contact between him and Hartman the lack of a better term um <laughs> cause um cause his race to kind of fly off the rails um it's a shame obviously as i said before it's a shame to see him retire but uh obviously he didn't feel like it was worthwhile or that he could salvage a better result from it sarah no, but um obviously that is the end of the sprint race and uh now the time has come that we go and uh, have a quick look, see who and uh, where people qualified and see who is on pole position for our fourth round at Daytona Road Course. Uh, I don't know about you, Kirk, but uh, let's go see the qualifying results. Qualifying on pole tonight uh, for the feature race, we have Kei the Kai really pulled that lap out of the bag, setting a 44.3 flying in the qualifying session right less less than a tenth back we have sophia starting in second with swizzy in p3 seven tenths back coach taking a very surprising p4 only being eight tenths off pole lb lewis in p5 cool and coolios in sixth again another good high qualifier quite a qualifying position there for coolios in p6 era yeah, a quite impressive top six that we have there. In P7, we then have Sophie in uh, that Ferrari. Uh, we then have, in P8, we have Pedro in that Mercedes. And in P9, we have a Joker and in that Ferrari. In 10th, rounding out the top 10, we then have Hartman. And in P11, rounding off the grid tonight, we have Midnight ISO in that McLaren. So, uh, quite an interesting qualifying, it looks like, and uh, sets us up nicely for an interesting feature race, if you agree, Kirk. Absolutely. Um, it's interesting to see where Katie Kai, uh, where he can stay out at the front of the pack, or, uh, or as we lose a few positions off the start to Sophie and Swizzy. And Swizzy only qualifying P3, I'm sure he'd definitely be slightly disappointed with that qualifying position. Obviously, we know how fast he's been throughout the entirety of this season. Um, I'm pretty sure he wouldn't, he wouldn't be happy with anything. Our uh, pole. 
And but we also have quite a few people who are qualifying higher than expected. So we like Coach LB and Kulios, all I guess you could say out of position from where you'd usually expect to find them. No offense intended to those drivers. It's just uh, pulled out absolutely storming lap, laps, all three of them. That uh, that's rewarded them in a high qualifying position. Yeah, a hundred percent agree. And it'll be interesting to see what tires they've uh, they've set their fastest laps on. And obviously, they'll be starting the feature race on. But I don't know if you agree. I'm uh, I'm now excited, pumped up to go and watch the feature race. Oh. Leading us away tonight for our feature race. We have Katie the Kai followed by Sophia and Swizzy taking out P3. And the lights out. And off we go. A poor start from Sophia. That allows Swizzy to jump her off the line. Another, well, a good start from Sophie, Sophie behind in that fringe and purple. Um, Ferrari looking to go to the inside and take that podium position off Sophia. As there's a slight contact there between LB Lewis and Sophie. Um, Unfortunately, just a little bit of drama right there. Nothing too much more to note about as we're heading towards the hairpin of turn five. But Kate Kai holding the lead at, for the moment. LB Lewis um, defending from Coach and Sophia. Looks like LB Lewis got a good start there. Uh, gained a few positions. It certainly seems like he has overtaken Coach off the line. All our drivers running in sing single file into this next right-hander. As you can see, Coach go up the inside of Lewis. A little bit argy-bargy there from Coach. A little bit robust. Got his elbows out just a little bit. As they run side by side as we run towards the banking. Still rubbing on each other just ever so slightly. Uh, it looks like LB Lewis holds the line for now. As we go up onto the banking. The uh, compromised line there for off from Coach allows Sophie to sneak up his inside as... Uh, we all run the single file down towards the chicane, Sarah. Yeah, like you said, uh, in the sprint race, a slipstream is key around here, so all drivers, you know, tucking in just behind each other to get as much slipstream as they can, as it looks like Sophie and LB Racing are going side by side into the chicane. Who's going to break later? LB Racing breaks the, just that little bit later than Sophie and gets the move done. Although Joker looks like he goes a little bit wide. But yeah, all in all, everyone getting away nice and clean, uh, nice and good uh, on lap one. Uh, unfortunately, at the back of the pack, it looks like Midnight Iso, although he's gained two positions off the start, it looks like he has managed to pick up himself a half second penalty up split at the chicane. Uh, obviously, not really how you want to start your race as we uh, see the drivers going pretty wide for a second there momentarily. Um, it's back towards the front of the pack. We have Coach <laughs> looking like he's attacking or well, possibly defending from Sophia. Sophia runs him right out of room and costs him a place to Joker. Um, it looks like our top three are already starting to bolt away from the rest of the pack ever so slightly, Sarah, with uh, Keith Kai leading the way at the moment. Yeah, um, very similar to, you know, the spin race of uh, Swizzy, Sophie and Katie the Kai kind of storming away, getting a, an early lead and kind of creating that gap from the rest of the pack. And uh, that's what they'll be looking to do again in the future race. And uh, yeah, I mean, we all know how fast Swizzy is, so I don't think it's going to take him long to put that pressure on Katie the Kai. It looks like he has already gained a position off start. Obviously, somewhere we might have just missed. It looks like he has managed to overtake Sophia somewhere uh, on the previous lap. Um, it looks like he is uh, within striking range of the Corvette of Kai. Um, probably not, not into this game, but maybe into the first corner. Yeah, as we have a little battle brewing between LB Racing and Sophia again. Uh, very similar place to last lap, you know, side by side just before the chicane here again this battle of who's going to break slightly later and they break about the same time and LB racing gets caught out he goes a little bit on the grass but that does the coach through and he might just get LB Lewis as he picks up a one second penalty you see not exactly what you want uh, obviously he must have outbroke himself ever so slightly into the chicane uh, and uh, it caused a little bit of a bottleneck behind him as uh, we see coach Sophie and Joker all looking like they're trying to fight for a very similar place on the track. Um, it's a long way to go, and I'm sure LB Lewis will at some point again see himself up towards the front of this pack as we see Joker and Kulios looking a little bit eager there to try and sneak past Sophie, but not quite be able to make that work. Um, Joker um, certainly has done well uh, at the start of this race, um, obviously taking full advantage of fighting drivers um, 
with Coach and and uh, Sophie to gain a few positions. Yeah, hundred percent. It's uh, it's definitely crucial. You know, if you can stay with the pack, even if a driver in front of you just makes that slight mistake, such as I'll be racing last lap, you can uh, really capitalise on mistakes if you're just that a little bit closer to the drivers in front. So uh, I think all drivers have got that in mind, but that also, you know, plays into LB Racing's favour as well. That if he can, you know, keep with the pack, if anyone makes a mistake, he can uh, reclaim a few spots that he may have lost. We've got Kulios round as he uh, as he's entered the banking. He's got just a little bit too eager on the throttle there and uh, caused him to loop it uh, as we enter the banking. Um, and if we look towards back of the front of the pack, it looks like... Uh, from, at some point, Sophia has got past Swizzy again on this um, on this lap. Um, so we got looks like we got uh, some ding dong battles on the way throughout the, this uh, pack era. Yeah, and especially between those three, uh, I think we've all you know we've all raced um, those top three, and we know that they definitely don't give up very easily. So uh, exactly what you say, maybe a few ding dong uh, ding dongs, yeah, a few kind of paint trades on the car and um, I'm sure we'll see this all for the remainder of the race as, as we enter lap 4 it looks like everybody's starting to calm down a little bit now uh, so our, our big winner is possibly uh, Uka obviously gained a few positions off at the start um, probably our bigger, biggest losers probably Kulios obviously we still have that slight um, spin on the previous lap to drop him down towards back of the pack. Obviously, LB Lewis picking up that one second penalty and dropping him down a little bit, but he's still well within reach of being able to achieve something in this race. Yeah, 100%. Obviously, like we say, um, it's not over until it's over. But to finish first, you must finish. Um, so, you know, as long as the drivers stick it out, I'm sure towards the end of the race where strategies start to play out, you know, it, the ball could be thrown in uh, their end of the court so yeah but especially this early it's not kind of worth to to give up or kind of you know don't go for those moves uh, if anything you know it motivates the drivers to go for a little bit more kind of daring moves to get the the positions they may have lost or to to get themselves in a good position before their pit stops absolutely um and I just want to say, uh, I want to say something about Coach Well. Coach doing very well to hold that fourth position that he uh, he off um, in qualifying. He's done quite well to even after all the battling, to, uh, be able to hold that position. Even though he has unfortunately he's just gone and picked up a half second penalty um, at this chicane, which might put him at risk to losing a few positions from the cars behind. Yeah, very similar to Sophie as well, picking up a half second penalty, and that does let LB Racing back through so uh, a little mistake from Sophie there but uh, LB racing back up a position it looks like Joker's gonna make a move on coach goes to the outside coach defending that apex although it does break just that little bit too much Joker looks to the inside but thinks better of it and uh, will he go for another move here into the inside no coach again well defended by coach Joker just tucking just behind him and uh, potentially, you know, waiting just that little bit longer, maybe to get round to the, the back of the track to make that move. Absolutely. I mean, at this point in the race, do you still want a battle? Or would you think about conserving or saving a little bit of fuel? Because obviously, uh, you don't really achieve much if you just stay within the pack battling for just positions at what point do you try and start working with the other drivers either bump just bumping them along or just saving a bit of fuel in the slipstream i think that's yeah i think if we had the answer to that we'd be millionaires you know that's one of the drivers kind of battles it's do i race you know do i race for positions or do i conserve a little bit more tires a little bit more fuel obviously um i think every kind of racer's mentality is just to, to go for those positions fight on track so it'll be interesting to see you know if the the drivers do keep battling up how the strategies will play out well i've just seen that we i think we've lost the driver sarah i think we've lost uh, swizzy somewhere because coach has been promoted up into third position yeah unfortunate very unfortunate obviously not what we like to see disconnect um, obviously it a shame because we all know how fast was he is and I'm sure you know he would have been battling especially for the win so yeah very unfortunate 
Um, and it's always, you know, sad to see such a fast driver disconnect. The Swizzy being our season one champion, um, we, obviously we know he has the, the uh, qualities and the uh, skills to uh, certainly be one of the top drivers no matter where we go. Yeah, and it looks like a potential coming together for Kulios and Midnight there. As Kulios, uh, as Midnight went a little bit wider, and it looked like Kulios slowed all the way down just to let Midnight back through. So, uh, you know, potentially Kulios knowing that he's done wrong, although <laughs> he doesn't wait, he doesn't wait long to try and get that position back again. So, um, <laughs> I think Kulios moving over slightly just to make sure Midnight got ahead and then striked again. Um. As we are now six laps into this race, it would be very interesting to see um, strategies everybody's on, as it looks like our top three drivers are all on the, the soft tyre. Um, it looks like Coach has probably got the best tyre wear out of our top three with the uh, most amount of fuel. Um, but then, interestingly, the driver in fourth, not a million miles away behind Coach, um, a little bit further behind from our leaders uh, Joker is actually on the medium tyre um, looking throughout the rest of the grid we have uh, Sophie and the Ferrari also on the medium, Pedro on the medium Armin on the medium and then Midnight Iso on the medium everybody else uh, being on the, the soft tyre that might then explain you know obviously going back to the, the qualifying positions it might explain why a few drivers you know qualified just that slightly higher than a, a few of of our kind of top spot drivers it's, they were, wanted to go on the fastest set of tyres you know really put themselves in a good position but um, that is the thing you know with strategies some of the drivers deciding to go, stay that little bit longer into the race before they need to come and pit and it looks like we have a battle between LB Racing and Sophie again going on to, to lap number seven look they were side by side but LB Racing again just waiting just that little bit longer I think that's the nature of this track really you know if you get side by side with a driver especially in this infield section here it's so hard to pass and get the move done so I think you know a lot of drivers waiting for that banked corner or potentially the chicane and uh, to get the move and try and overtake a, a fellow driver but yeah interesting to see you know the drivers thinking better of it in this infield section I mean, it's also, um, it's almost over, if you're, unless you're significantly faster than the driver in front of you, it's almost redundant to overtake. Um, cause obviously, it's so difficult to break the slipstream um, um, on in the infield section because it's not that long. No, and it's quite we could, to break sorry to interrupt there, Kirk, but we could see a new leader, Katie Lakai, picking up a second penalty. And uh, just looking at how close Sophia is, although herself she's got a half second penalty, so you might just get in front of uh, of Katie Lakai here. And there yeah. we are, right? <laughs> two penalties, and we see two penalties and one overtake for Sarah. Yeah, I think I think Sophia would have thought, oh, as if I didn't get a penalty there, I would have been quite a far in front of Katie the Kai. But yeah, unfortunately, you know, both uh, P1 and P2 picking up a penalty, which um, I don't know if that brings Coach any closer to them. They're kind of uh, in a world of their own at the minute. But uh, yeah, picking up a few penalties, but it just goes to show how hard they're pushing at the moment. Yeah, um, it looks like there's probably about um, eight or so second gap between our uh, team coach and the top two of Sophia and Kai. Um, yeah, other than that, it seems like uh, everybody's kind of settled down now. Um, obviously, we're waiting for the first batch of pit stops, which I'm assuming will be somewhere between the end of lap 12 and end of lap 12 onwards um, we'll see, probably see some drivers go off the soft tyres and onto either another set of softs or the medium tyre um, and I think when it comes to the pit stops it'll also be quite interesting to see how much fuel they take you know, when, when I did this race there I know I was only take, I was taking a full tank I was taking about 80% yeah it's, it, it's that thing it's like you said is it worth picking up a, a full tank of fuel not always if you know you're going to pit before you run out of fuel, especially if you kind of factor in before the race, you know you're going to pit before 
well before you run out of fuel it's not always beneficial to pick up a full tank unless you want to make that last pit stop just that little bit shorter yeah um it looks like actually kd kai is probably got kd kai in second now that gap looks like it's possibly been extended a bit on this lap uh, it, it seems like he has got the worst tire wear with the least amount of fuel compared to our top three of uh, or, or the top drivers of Sophie and uh, Coach. Um, in terms of best tire wear, it probably looks like uh, Sophie in P5 in that Ferrari. Though she hasn't got the most fuel, her tires seem to be in the best condition, so maybe she's in the uh, strike zone for an alternate strategy, Sarah. Yeah, potentially. And uh, like you said just uh, a while ago, maybe she's thinking, I need to conserve these tyres just that little bit more. She's seen the, the drivers around her, you know, burn for a little bit more than what they probably expected to. So she's uh, she decided, yeah, I need to look after these tyres a little bit more. But uh, it looks like, you know, this little pack from P4 all the way down to P8 is about to heat up going on to the, the banked corners. You know, all five of these drivers being really close to each other. Okay, Although, big high. Hey. Hey, Sarah? It's what I was just saying that I said five of them and then unfortunately Hartman did have a little bit of a spin coming onto the banked corner. So uh, that does release uh, the other four drivers in front. Uh, very similar to what happened to Kate Kai, Kate Kai uh, doing a little half spin coming out onto the banking and picking up a one second penalty because he joined the banking too late and then he picked up another half second penalty uh, at the uh, chicane. We see this uh, at the moment, this race is not going the greatest for Kate Kai because he's now uh, a bit out of the reach of uh, Sophie now. So we see yeah. Kate Kai pit a little bit early. Yeah, very early, but I think we we all know that that Corvette, especially around here, is going to burn through tyres and fuel like it's nothing. So, yeah, unfortunately, you know, just having to pit that a little bit earlier um, and maybe, you know, potentially we'll see him, him go on to the mediums or the hards, which will bring him that little bit longer into the race. We've got a battle between the two Ferrari drivers again, Sophie and Joker, and Sophie moves to the inside, gets the move done. Will she defend? Will Joker go around the outside? Oh, a little tap between the two, which does let LB racing through, and Pedro is looking to pounce as well on that slight mistake there. Although Pedro looks like he's just about to tuck in behind Joker. Yeah, very close between uh, these four here. Like I said, they're all kind of swapping positions. You never know who's going to lead this pack, but that does promote Sophie up to P3. If these drivers keep battling, surely it must only help Lewis because once Lewis pits and comes out on fresh tyres, if these three drivers keep battling, although they, although um, their tyres may be newer than Lewis's, Lewis is going to be so far up track compared to them. But, uh, you know, I mean, it might give him the advantage, Sarah. Yeah, uh, it might well do. And it looks like Joker is trying to, to find that line past Lewis at the moment. But uh, like you say, I think, you know, Lewis, if he pits, he's going to come out on fresh tyres. And uh, that might, he might be a threat towards the end of the race uh, for these drivers here, especially because they've been battling for so long. It does look like Joker has lost a bit of time to LB racing and it has brought him back into the arms of Pedro. Joker taking that low line, Pedro taking the slightly higher line on the banked corners here and going on to lap number 11. But, um, yeah, you know, it, Pedro is he's taking that little bit longer to kind of get to the, the front of the pack, but obviously deciding to go on a slightly different tyre. But uh, it looks like this battle here is going to be quite an interesting one, shall we say. I wonder if Pedro can get himself up onto the podium by the end of the race. Possibly, it looks like Joker outbroke himself ever so slightly going into towards the first corner. Like Pedro just clipped the pit wall there. Very lucky to not pick up damage. I don't know if that was a bit of a visual glitch, but it did look like Pedro caught his rear arch on the, that pit wall. So very, very lucky. I think he has to count his lucky stars that he didn't get any damage there. Um, and also another thing to note, um, Midnight Iso has also appeared on the same lap as KD Kai. So maybe, maybe I'm talking rubbish there. Maybe uh, my strategy books got out the window before we even, even really started. It's, it's that thing. I think we know that Midnight definitely likes to take the slightly alternate 
uh, strategy or the unique strategy, shall we, shall we say, compared to some of the other drivers. So uh, potentially a strategy that w me and you might have thought that he might take, he'll go for something completely different. But yeah, he's going on to uh, a set of softs. I think that's uh, in the hopes he can get that a little bit closer to this, especially this battle between the four drivers, Pedro, Joker, LB, Lewis and, um, and Sophie. Obviously, we won't see that for a little bit longer. Uh, he's just got a little bit of catching up to do. But, um, yeah, obviously, K did the car pit in early, midnight pit in early. Will they be a threat towards the end of the race? Or uh, did they kind of not use the, the full tyre life, shall we say? It'd be interesting to see what LB Lewis does right now, because his, his uh, rear right looks in a very second-hand shape, and he does, he pits in. This is probably our biggest flashpoint or to see where he comes out compared to Midnight Ice, I think he might be a bit of a ways in in the front of Midnight as a uh, night is just uh, started coming around the banking now. But it's yeah. quite on pit lane here, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah, and it <laughs> kind of spits you out right on the racing line, so <laughs> drivers are going to have to be careful coming around that that turn one and uh, coming around that turn one into turn two. Pedro does make a move on Joker. Joker clipping the grass just a little bit. But yeah, it's kind of one of those those pit lanes where you're like you've driven into the, the pits, you get to the pits quite early, but then it, everything takes a little bit longer. You're just like, I want to get going, I want to get going again. So I uh, completely understand, you know, the drivers wanting to get going again. Um, but yeah, it's quite a long pit lane here. And that does affect, obviously, when and uh, kind of where in the race you're deciding to pit because you've got to factor in that time loss. Here we are, LB Lewis taking a full tank of fuel and coming out quite comfortably in front of Midnight even after all the battling they've been doing during this first stint, Sarah. Yeah, and I'm sure, you know, he'll be very happy about that. Potentially, you know, the slipstream of uh, of the other three cars that he had around him potentially helped him to, to not lose too much time compared to Midnight. The all Joker is facing the wrong way. A nice little 360 there for Joker coming out of the chicane. So yeah, unfortunately that does drop him down below Kulios, and uh, obviously struggling to get it to get it straight. Obviously the tyre is just that little bit overheating, and uh, potentially a sign of needing some some new rubber, some more grip. But uh, we're only 13 laps into the race, so it's, it's definitely still on for Joker. I mean, um, of our top uh, uh, six drivers. Uh, it certainly seems like Coach is doing the well, keeping those soft tyres alive much longer than, than uh, Sophia has. Um, he actually caught Sophia by almost uh, a second and a half on the previous lap. Uh, I think it's time to call it a day on those set of those <laughs> set of tyres. What do you think, Sarah? 100%. That, um, <laughs> especially that rear right tyre. It's, it's looking like it's seen some better days. But um, yeah, I mean, uh, a massive kind of boost for coach there I think I think he's definitely got the the term of tire whisperer down we've seen him in previous races in previous seasons he he's not afraid to kind of take the tires to the rim shall we say and um, again here you know he's not afraid of using all of the rubber but unfortunately at some point it will uh, it will need to, he will need to pit for a, a fresh set of rubber but it does look like Sophia will be pitting shortly as that fuel light has also come on but uh, yeah, I mean, what a first stint Sophia's had so far, you know. A few battles between Swizzy and Katie the Kai, but manages to get in front again. So could, potentially we could see her win the sprint and the feature race here if she keeps it up. Possibly. I mean, I certainly won't play it past her because uh, he is an astonishingly quick driver. Um, in terms of pit stop news, it, uh, that little spin we saw Joker have uh, where he did the, at the chicane, where he did that little pirouette, Cost certainly cost him a lot of time because he is quite a ways behind LB Lewis and as well as been jumped by Midnight Iso as well. Yeah, um, like like we said, they obviously you don't want to lose too much time in a pit stop, but obviously, a spin does lose you quite a bit of time as well. But I think you know, a fresh set of tyres will wear. Uh, won't hurt, you know, it will get him that little bit longer into the race and hopefully we'll bring him back into the the fighting pack. You see Kudio's pit with 0% fuel left, Sarah. The first time <laughs> we've seen that this season, is it? 
No, drivers like to kind of take it right to the to the end of the barrel, shall I? like, and uh, obviously the tyres as well. They're not afraid to take them to the rims. Although, I have a sneak thing that you know this new updates um, with the physics that have come in. Um, <laughs> in future races, I don't think we'll see drivers, you know, going right to the end of the the tyre life. Uh, it's interesting. His coach uh, been jumped by LB Lewis during the pit stop phase. It looks like coach may be under threat from LB Lewis up into this happening. LB Lewis looks towards the inside. Coach gives him plenty of room on the inside. Uh, coach, well, LB Lewis, should I say, he's got a much warmer tyres than coach. Can he capitalise on it? Even, I say that even, but they are both on the medium tyre. Um, coach is now a lot newer than LB Lewis's. Looks like, uh, although he may may not have been able to uh, overtake Coach, the undercut has certainly worked in Lewis's favour, Sarah. Yeah, I mean, uh, you were you were bang on the money, shall we say, earlier with LB Lewis, you know, pitting at the right time, at the right place, to uh, make sure that he comes out ahead of the likes of Midnight, Joker, and uh, obviously potentially ahead of Coach, as they look like they're going side by side through the, the banked corner. LB Lewis taking that low line coach going for the slightly higher obviously that will put him on the outside of this first part of the chicane but if he can stay with him side by side that will promote him into the inside in the the next part although he does look like he's tucked behind lb racing and uh we'll try again in the uh, in a few minutes but we've seen the the top three coming into pit We've got Sophia, we've got Sophie as well coming in with 0% fuel and then Pedro with a, a mere 2% fuel. So, yeah, drivers really, you know, precise with their <laughs> with their pit stops today. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, I was both Sophia and Sophie both coming in the pits with 0% fuel there. It's like um, the undercut has worked extremely well for KDK coming out uh, well in front of Sophia. That gap is about... Or five seconds, I want to say. Uh, so it certainly worked in Katie Kai's favour for the moment. So uh, interesting to see how this unwinds throughout the rest of this uh, rest of this race. Also, big winners from the pe pit stops. Pedro as well up into P5 in f out in front. He actually, well, he actually jumped Sophie in the pits, and uh, and they uh, likes Hartman, Hartman as well. Um, also, Midnight ISO big winner in, in this pit pit in phase as well as he has gained three positions i want to say jumped hartman joker and kudios all throughout uh folks appearing that slightly earlier and uh getting that fresh rubber sarah yeah it looks like again midnight with his unique strategy calls it has paid in his favor in this second stint as it has brought him just behind sophie it looks like the two are going to battle it out Ferrari versus McLaren. We've heard that before in the <laughs> certain um, motorsport categories, but uh, again, we've got Mercedes and McLaren fighting it out into the chicane. Coach going for that outside onto the inside line, gets the move done, and uh, looks like he's going to put his foot all the way down to the floor and try and get create a gap between himself and LB Racing. But as I said earlier on in the, earlier on in the race, it is so difficult to get uh, the driver behind out of the range. Uh, you really need to have a mega mega infield uh, well part of the infield lap to be able to break it. Otherwise, you, it's just a bit like this, between fast. I mean, the only reason the gaps have really broken out as much as they have is uh, thanks to uh, the pit stops and pit strategy, Sarah. Yeah, and uh, it's quite interesting to see, you know. If they pitted maybe one lap earlier, one lap later, it could have been a completely different story that we're watching unfold at the moment. But it looks like, you know, the, the pit stops have worked out for the majority of people. They've brought them back out within the slipstream range of uh, a few drivers, which, you know, goes to help them for this second stint into their third stint. But uh, yeah, you know, obviously, like you said, Midnight, a big winner at the moment into P7 from P10. So um, I'm sure he'll be looking to capitalise as much as he can and uh, maybe potentially, you know, bring the fight to Sophie. I'm, I'm, I'm sure he'll be saying, look, obviously uh, Midnight Iso on the soft tyre has the slight tyre advantage at the moment compared to Sophie. As we see Sophie running very, very wide coming on, onto the bank section. I don't think Midnight Iso could get any closer if he tried, Sarah. 
No, it's very close. Very, very close indeed between the two drivers here. I wonder if Sophie's going to brake check him or not, or if Midnight's just going to duck out of uh, of her way. Although he does look like he brakes, he, he takes that into consideration and brakes just that little bit earlier just to make sure that he doesn't kind of, um, <laughs> shall we say, in terms of yeet Sophie out of the way. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm sure he'll be looking to get uh, back into the slipstream range of Sophie. But it looks like all the drivers, except for LB Racing and Coach, they've they've created a little bit of a gap, not enough gap to break that slipstream. It looks like LB Racing going to the outside line into turn one. Although Coach breaks a lot later than LB Racing and uh, heavily, heavily defends turn one. A little bit of contact between the two and it does force LB Racing to break just that little bit harsher. But um, yeah, Coach not willing to give up that third place at the moment. Obviously parking it on the exit of the corner as well. Don't allow your opponent to get a much uh, better run off the exit of the corner or you could find yourself up the threat into the upcoming corners. But uh, that has also allowed the likes of Pedro to close the gap to this battle for third. Um, and what was a two battle, or well, two car battle for third place, is now looking more like a five car battle for third Terra. Yeah, um, <laughs> obviously we are around about halfway into the race, and uh, let's just say that the drivers haven't, <laughs> they're, they're definitely, you know, making us work today. But it's been battles across the field, even into halfway into the race. So, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uh, the other half of the race. It just looks. Midnight taking that slightly higher line in the bank's corner does get the move done on uh, on Sophie. Obviously, we've not seen that much so far. You know, a driver going to the uh, slightly higher line and getting that move done. So it looks like Midnight just had that little bit more top-end speed compared to the Ferrari round there. But it's cost them a bit of time, hasn't it? Because look at their gap. They were so close in the infield section and now uh, it is all opened up again on the oval part. Um... Looks like Coach might as well might also be just managing to break away ever so slightly at the front here as well. Not sure yeah. if LB Lewis has been trying to defend just a little bit too hard from Pedro to cost him a bit of time. But uh, this is all, all. If they the more they battle, the more it plays into Coach's favour. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, as LB Lewis looks like he's defending quite hard from Pedro. Like you say, Coach has just got that little bit more breathing room. Although he does look like. LB Lewis, you know, breaking very late, it does bring him back into contention for that third place. But he's a, he's been he's in a bit of a Mercedes sandwich at the moment. He's got obviously coach in front of him, and then he's got Pedro right behind him in another Mercedes. He's uh, a <laughs> let's just say he's got a little bit of breathing room, but not a lot because I think Pedro will want to try and get in front of LB Lewis as quick as he can, especially through this section here before the chicane. Um, to be fair, I mean, at this point, do you really want to fight or do you want to save fuel? Because obviously, I know this is the third place that they're all gunning for. But realistically, are you going to catch the likes of Katie Dekai or Sophie? Or Sophia? Um, I think if it was me, I'd be uh, just park, getting in behind, maybe switching the fuel mix up to two or three and just uh, trying to save a little fuel and tyre, Sarah, and wait for later on into the race to really uh, challenge. Yeah, although it's, uh, you know, driver's mentality, it's uh, psychology. I could get, you know, I could talk about this, you know, all day. You know, I think the drivers, they they want that little bit of a boost, you know. They, they want to know that they're fighting for potentially a spot on the podium. And uh, to try, you know, in case it might happen, it might not happen, but in case the likes of Sophia and uh, Katie the Kai make a costly mistake, they want to be there to capitalise on it. So, um, yeah, I think... But it's a good thing, you know, all the drivers push in extremely hard and uh, talking about extremely hard, Pedro giving that, that wall a little bit of a tap, again, not picking up damage and he does look like he's about to get ahead of LB Lewis who does make a little bit of a mistake going into turn one. So the two Mercedes now battling it out for a podium spot. Or maybe a little bit of a brown trousers moment there from uh, LB Lewis making very, very late into turn one and almost collecting coach in the process. Yeah, it was. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure Coach will be uh, would have been looking in his rearview mirror, thinking, "Oh, that McLaren's getting very close to me," and uh, yeah, it was like you say, potentially a brown uh, trousers moment or a need of some new shorts. 
But um, yeah, obviously now he's got the uh, the likes of Pedro just behind him, so coach will be have to be on it um, before you know. Don't let up too much because we know Pedro's definitely one of the drivers that will try and make, um, well, try and create an opportunity if he can, or wait until you know coach gives him just that little bit of room to get an overtake done. But I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't take you know the two McLaren drivers just behind these two Mercedes here. They'll definitely be looking at the two Mercedes in front and seeing if they're going to force each other into a mistake. And it does look like Coach will stay ahead of Pedro through the chicane. But yeah, a three-way battle for P P5, and it could be a, a well another five-car battle for P3, like you said earlier. They uh, they've got very close to each other again. It's going to be interesting to see how uh, this all plans out after. Uh batch of pit stops uh, I'm expecting the next batch of pit stops uh, around lap 25 um, between lap uh, end of lap 22 to the end of lap 25 or so in that range uh, certainly the drivers on the uh, who have chose the soft tyres for this middle stint looking at pitting sooner rather than later but the likes of uh, well basically everybody in this battle for P3 they're all uh, snaking about across the track oh as LB Lewis breaks very late and collects both Pedro and Coach uh, I think he, might, he was lucky he managed to escape picking up any damage from that but uh, a little bit of lapse of a judgement there from uh, LB Lewis yeah oh and Sophie going on the grass and drifting around that corner there very lucky not to, to lose the car underneath her but, so yeah <laughs> extremely lucky from Sophie there and uh, a lot of skill to keep that car facing the right way after a little bit of a touch on the grass but, and Midnight spinning round coming onto the, the banked corner so yeah it brings him back into P7 not too far away from the drivers in front but yeah a, a few mistakes from uh, a few of the drivers here which has cost him just that little bit and it looks like Coach had uh, taken that low line again Pedro taking the high line it does look like Coach is forcing Pedro just that little bit closer to the wall. Who's going to break later? Coach again breaking slightly later. Pedro trying to tuck in behind him. Yeah, these drivers, it's uh, they're very close to each other at the moment. But Coach narrowed his, uh, uh, his line on into the entry of the chicane, which really compromised his exit. Um, which, well, he compromised entry that cost him exit speed, which allowed Pedro to get a much better run onto the banking. Or back onto the oval as they are running side by side up towards the pit straight. Is this a, uh, this a little hint of things to come towards the end of this race at the finish? Uh, as they run in towards turn one, Pedro taking that nice wide line, giving himself plenty of time to slow down. Going round the outside of coach, carrying the momentum around the first corner and uh, you're in P3 for, uh, ever so slightly. Well, I say ever so slightly, but for now. Yeah, very close between himself and Coach as well. Uh, coach slowing down just perfectly not to make sure that he comes in contact with Pedro. But that, these two battling out, it has brought LB Lewis back in contention for a, a possible podium spot or a, an overtake on Coach. And there again... You know, Sophie and uh, Midnight, not too far behind, will be wa watching this battle unfold. And uh, like I say, we'll be sure to try and get in the slipstream of these drivers again. Although it does look like Coach is uh, the go the cap uh, the gap sorry between Pedro and Coach has opened up a little bit. So Pedro, you know, thankful that he's uh, got out of the, the dirty air of the drivers behind, and will be looking to try. And close that gap on Sophia, although that will be a hell of a task to do. I'm, I'm just looking at the lap times of our, our drivers. Looks like actually P8 Hartman, who gives, I think, gave Midnight Ice a, uh, Ice a very slight tap heading into the chicane. He has actually been running faster than this, this entire pack in front of him. But while they've all been squabbling for position, it has allowed him to catch up. He is now. Uh, uh, right behind Midnight ISO and not a million miles away from this uh, battle for, from, for P3. Yeah, the uh, the Corvette power has definitely proved in his favour today. You know, he's maybe potentially made a few mistakes here and there and uh, qualified slightly out of position. Um, but he's, he's back in, in this midfield battle here. And uh, like I said earlier, he'll be 
probably look in to see if uh, any of these drivers make a small mistake. But he does go onto the, uh, the inside, then the outside line of uh, turn two. Midnight battling it out, trying to keep that seventh place. But yeah, it looks like uh, these two will be swapping places this lap. Possibly. Um, <laughs> although, if we look at the state of the tyres, it looks like uh, that ISO's tyres are definitely um, getting on a bit now in terms of age, and the uh, Hartman is, are looking quite a bit fresh. So, maybe it might be worth midnight to maybe not fight this this overtake and just uh, sit behind Hartman until he, until he comes around to pit next. Especially with the uh, overwhelming pace Hartman is showing compared to him at the moment. Oh yeah, 100%. Um, although, again, you know, I don't think the drivers will want to tell it up too much, even if it will save a little bit more tyre wear. I think they're, <laughs> especially the, the 22 laps that we've seen so far, no driver has been willing to kind of give up their position in order to save tyre or fuel. So I think maybe next week when we're at the Oval, we might see a, a bit more kind of conservation, but today I think the drivers are just going uh, full, fully down on the throttle and uh, not really you know, thinking too much about their their tyre or their fuel which you know it could play in their favour although sometimes you know you need the, the brains as well as the brawn to kind of make it towards to the end of the race but I think remarkably you know all drivers driving remarkably well today and I'm uh, quite impressed so far and uh, I don't know about you, but I feel it's going to heat up towards the end of this race, especially, like you say, after the, the second bout of pit stops. Yeah, um, obviously, I can't believe, uh, I almost can't believe it, we have now got six drivers battling for uh, third place, all separated by, uh, by uh, about about um, five or so seconds. You know, any any one of them, any one of them could uh, end up on this podium. As we see, Katie Kai is our first driver to uh, pit for the second time. He's gone for a set of soft tyres. Do uh, you think he'll be able to take it? The uh, was it 13 or so laps to the end of this race, Sarah? I think he might Ooh, be quite just ever so slightly close. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult, very difficult indeed. Uh, although you know he's been majority of the time he's been in some clean air, um, and he might not have to push it that hard. Obviously, knowing that the drivers in front of him will have to pit at some point, you know he can he can lift his foot just that little bit off the uh, off the accelerator. But Willie, we'll have to find out. Oh, as midnight, a massive mistake from midnight there on the, in the chicane. Maybe potentially getting a little bit on the grass or a little bit too much curbing, and that does kind of take him into the tire wall there. But yeah, you know the car as soon as you get on any curbs or any grass, it's kind of just you have no control you just get kind of pushed to one side and unfortunately it was the side of the tire wall so picking up quite a bit of damage and losing quite a few positions there very unfortunate for midnight yeah and then there were, were five for that battle for p3 um i mean what i said was right sarah the first driver i expect the first driver to pit at the end of lap 22 and i got that right with gay and kai coming in at the end of lap 22 uh, See, we got our second driver to stop now, being Joker. Obviously, Midnight ISO coming in as well to repair that damage. Um, interestingly enough, although they weren't running too far apart on track, Joker actually has 10% more fuel than the uh, McLaren driver. Yeah, um, it looks like Joker's been definitely, you know, looking after his his fuel just a little bit more in the second stint. And then we'll see him, you know, it won't cost him too much time in the pits now. Yeah, after that, you know, that slight mistake earlier, we've not really seen Joker within the, the battle, especially for this, this P3 battle that we have here. So uh, potentially, you know, that's, that slightly uh, shorter pit stop will bring him back in contention and add another card to the list for this third place battle. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. You know, we always like to see a close battle at the uh, front of the pack. Well. Maybe not quite at the front, but uh, certainly for uh, it could be anyone's game for this podium final podium position as Midnight ISO sits the pits now. Who oh, are good uh, 15 seconds or so behind uh, Joker and almost going a lap down to uh, Sophia. Yeah, he'll definitely 
I know I know that he definitely won't want Sophia to lap him, so uh, I'm <laughs> I'm sure right now we're gonna see Midnight setting some really fast lap times in order for that not to happen. But uh, obviously we shall see. Um, the pace of Sophia around this track today has been kind of too fast, shall we say? She's uh, she's not really looked, needed to look back that much. She's just kind of got in front, stayed in front, and uh, controlled the race. Maybe not quite that because uh, KDK is our uh, net race leader. Obviously, pitting early. Uh, I'm not, not not to call you wrong, Sarah. Um, obviously, to be in P2 as she as she was before Kai pitted, uh, she has very much uh, drove her own race and drove very well. Um, it's uh, she's going for the overcut to take the fresh tyres to more, to the end of this race. Um, she's got plenty of fuel left, about a quarter of a tank, but I don't think it'll be enough to get towards the end of this race. Um, next driver to pit is Coach. Coach coming out well ahead of Joker Midnight Iso. Uh, maybe that might be two more drivers out of this battle for the final podium position, Sarah. Yeah, potentially, as we see, LB Racing and Sophie going side by side into the chicane. Sophie breaking just a little bit later, and that will get leave uh, the inside line for the second part of the chicane. And uh, very lucky the two not to come into contact, as we see Sophia also coming into pit with, uh, like you say, nearly a quarter tank of fuel. So hopefully she won't have to spend that much time in the pits and then can get back onto that final stint and uh, bring the fight to Katie the guy. This is the moment of truth, isn't it? See where Katie the guy comes out to Sophia Katie the guy just coming round the banking of the final corner. Look at getting that slipstream off. Uh, helping him just uh, just about as he comes off the, the final per, well final third. Um, Sophia is taking currently refueling. Well, she is currently refueling. When does she stop? Katie the Kai, Katie the Kai coming into the first corner now. There are, Sophia is leaving her pit box now, and here she comes on the pit exit. Where is Katie the Kai? She has done it. She has undercut Katie the Kai, but quite substantially as well. Um, and it must say on those fresh soft tyres, surely it's advantage Sophia now. Uh, nor what I said earlier, Sarah. <laughs> Obviously, uh, this was all part of Sophia's plan all along. Yeah, I think she planned it perfectly. There, she knew if she if she put you know a few good lap times in, that she could potentially get that over cut done on Katie the Kai, and she does manage it to get it done. But we did say you know Katie the Kai put in just that little bit early. Obviously, he'll have to stretch the tyre like just that little bit more but we all know that now that Sophia doesn't have to stretch the tyres I think you know she's fully able to take the the tyres right to the end so potentially Katie the Kai put in just a few laps too early but uh, you know it's I think he'll definitely be able to bring the fight back to Sophia towards the end but he'll just have to look after those tyres just that little bit more than what Sophia will have to. I'm not sure I'm not sure about that uh, Sarah because uh, his tyres are his, well, his rear right is already looking at uh, Maybe a little, maybe like ten percent worn or so. Uh, well, he goes very wide through, uh, through the chicane. Uh, possibly, are you picking up another penalty there? No. Yes, has picked up a half second penalty on the exit of the chicane by go, uh, just going like a little bit too wide. Uh, see, not what he really wants to do is he's trying to hunt down down Sophia, who we know is uh, listeringly quick. Yeah, very unfortunate for for KD the guy there. We did both pick it up that he went just that little bit wide coming out of the sh chicane so yeah potentially you know very unfortunate but that won't put him in a good position to fight for that that lead again although you know come uh, 35 laps around this track is it very challenging so to even come away with a p2 and know that you you know you could have fought fight well, you could have fought for the win it's i think kd the car would be and should be quite happy with that obviously we've still got around about seven laps to go so it's definitely not over until it's over but it's going to be a hard one for Kade the Kai to, to get in the lead. Pedro's also managed to make the overcut work as well now again about four or five seconds in front of coach and uh, well if it's like this now what's it going to be like for uh, uh, Sophie who's currently leading the way where is she going to come out compared to the likes of coach obviously before she pitted, 
who was uh, behind, well, before Pedro pitted, she was behind Pedro. Um, but uh, it'd be interesting to see whether she comes out in the gap in between Pedro and Coach, or whether she can jump Coach as well. Yeah, um, obviously that is the, the big question. I'm, I'm sure she'll be she'll be looking to try and she'll be looking to try and uh, get the uh, overcut done. Although Pedro, again, he looks like he's kind of planned it perfectly to the fact that he knows that he's well. To be fair, he's actually been in the clean air for quite a long time now. Earlier on, he had that battle between coach and the rest of the drivers, but. Um, Ever since he got in front, he's been able to have that little bit more breathing room where Sophia's kind of been in or around the other drivers. So I think, again, planned perfectly by Pedro there. He's looking on for a, a very happy and very comfortable P3. Yeah, absolutely. Um, although I wouldn't say that until we, uh, where Sophie comes out compared to Pedro. Um, we, could, we could talk big beforehand, but... Uh, you, uh, you never know until the uh, strategies have worked themselves out, Sarah. Oh, 100%. You can't, we can't call it. I think we're, we've uh, <laughs> we've definitely learned that over the past seasons. Uh, it's impossible to call these races in uh, their finishing, finishing positions because whenever we say something, they go and prove us wrong. So, uh, yeah, like you say, it's not over until it's over. But, um, I mean, what a race all the drivers have had in their own kind of respect. They've all had a kind of standout moment during this race. I mean, I think at the moment, the, 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 uh, the standout driver has got to be Pedro. Was he starting at P, was it P7 or P8? And uh, be on track to finish P4, possibly even P3. Yeah, um, I think, like you say, Pedro, a, a big winner here. He's managed to, to fight his way through the pack. And since, you know, starting on that, alternative tyre has helped him go that little bit longer and fight for a little bit longer but I mean yeah all the drivers have done remarkably well as uh, Sophie comes into pit with a, a, a 1% fuel so again cutting it fine but she won't have to put too much fuel in thankfully as we've only got six laps to go yeah, absolutely um, just a quick lap time check between Sophie and the Kai uh, they run Basically, exactly the same lap time within uh, nine thousandths of a second. Second in uh, Sophia's advantage, so uh, that's a big changes there. Right, it looks like Sophia might just have this in the bag. But I say that, and she runs a little bit wide on the exit of uh, turn five. <laughs> <laughs> the drivers must know that we're watching them. Whenever we kind of praise them, they make that that slight mistake. But um, you know, or they just you know. They know that we're watching them and they don't want to show the world that, you know, they're, they're as good as what we make them out to be. But <laughs> I'm only joking. All of the drivers that we've got here in the Nighthawk Racing Championship, they're all, they're all amazing and they all drive a really good race. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of all the drivers. And uh, I've got to say, you know, the Red Lobby this week have been blisteringly fast, all of them. You know, uh, me and Kirk were talking about how the, the drivers set such good lap times in qualifying and they've gone again to show in the feature race that they can kind of keep these qualifying times up but even when they make a slight mistake they're still pretty fast and willing to fight. Yeah, pretty fast and understatement Sarah. I, I don't think I don't think I even got into the forty sixes as when I ran this race in the in the blue in the blue lobby and uh, if we had K the car with the fastest lap we were forty four seven. So I'm at least two, two and a bit seconds slower. So, uh, well, if you're two and a bit, I'm at least probably four and a bit. So uh, <laughs> if that makes you feel any better. But uh, yeah, I've been pretty fast. Like you say, is an understatement. I don't think there's any really words to describe how fast these drivers are. But um, yeah, uh, although it looks like Kade of the Kai has managed to close that gap on Sophia a little bit. They're not as far as what they were apart from each other a few laps ago. So, you know, five laps to go. KD the car will be looking to try his best is to put that little bit of pressure on Sophia and try and kind of force her into a mistake. If she does make a little bit of a mistake, she does have a little bit of a wiggle, touches the grass, and uh, KD the car will be looking on here thinking, oh, the wind's not over just yet. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe I should stop talking because I always seem to uh, the worst things happen. Um, Sophia maybe onto the, the grass off. again. Yeah, again. 
Uh, he really needs to get her head down and uh, start maybe concentrating a little bit more wise she is at the risk of losing this victory Kade Kai a few laps ago that gap was almost five seconds and now is almost right on her rear, rear bumper well within the slipstream range so just looking at lap times last lap she lost 2.2 uh, seconds to him in one lap alone obviously uh, soft tyres not really agreeing with the Corvette Corvette no, I think all Corvette drivers, you know, struggling with that a little bit. You'd think, you know, American car, American track, it would be the, the best suited car for this track, but it looks like it struggled just that little bit, like you say, on fuel and tyre um, tire wear. So I think drivers will be kind of gathering all the data and uh, obviously we're back here again next week for the Oval and they'll be looking to see as we all... Oh, Sophia... Katie the car goes side by side. Could we see Katie the car going back into the lead here? Certainly looks like it at this moment as they come in towards turn turn one. Uh, Sophia still got Clyde just about alongside as Katie the car goes very wide and almost well definitely off the circuit, which really allows Sof Sophia to just drive up up the inside there, Sarah. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like you say. Maybe a bit of a strategic play there from Katie Kai, maybe using that to save a possibly a little bit of fuel, as they both get very squirrely off, off on the exit of uh, the corner. Potentially. To be fair, they look, they're both of their tyres look kind of the same at the moment, so potentially, you know, a few mistakes have made Sophia cost that, well, use a little bit too much tyre wear, um, as what she probably wanted. And just slightly lower back, we've seen Sophie overtake LB Racing, although LB Racing just up behind Sophie. So the battle's not off for P5, but uh, and that Hartman not too far behind these two here. So again, he'll be looking to try and uh, force the two drivers' head into a slight mistake. But uh, yeah, all the uh, <laughs> whenever we say, whenever we predict a winner, they always kind of spice things up towards the end. So um, like you say, potentially a strategic play from KD the Kai, but I think you know. It might be, like you said, pitting that slightly bit too early. They just go very wide there again. Hopefully that's not another penalty for KD Zakai. But, um, yeah, I think it's not over, obviously, yet. We've still got four laps to go. But if Sophia can kind of keep this gap to about this sort of gap that they've got now, or especially more than an arm's length, shall we say, um, I'm, I'm sure Sophia will try her best to, to keep the win. Although I think the last lap has proved that Kei Zukai is definitely not out of contention just yet. Not at all. Um, hey, when you were talking there, I was just went on board with Joker. It looked like he did a little little 360 for fun, uh, keeping eighth place from Kulios. Um, but uh, probably, he probably don't want to do that m many more times, otherwise he'll probably lose that position to Kulios. Yeah, it looks like uh, Joker's had a little bit of a kind of a difficult race this week. Obviously, we saw him in his debut around Monza, kind of in the uh, in the blue lobby, you know, um, driving really really fast, um, showing his skill. But I think you know that the Ferrari, especially around Daytona, it's a difficult car to handle, and it's a difficult car on both tyre wear and fuel. So. A difficult race for Joker, but I'm sure again, like the other drivers, he'll be looking forward to next week where we've not got the infield section, we've just got that oval, and maybe the fire will be a little bit kinder to him. Well, we're saying that Sophie obviously had two, had two sloppy laps there, which allowed Kay to kind of close that gap right up. And then she follows those two slap, sloppy laps up with a, a personal fastest lap of the race set in a 45.1. On the previous lap, it looks maybe a little bit on the borderline there, quite a bit wide. But she's currently three tenths up on this lap. She's she is going in for Katie the Kai's personal, well, fast lap of the session at the moment. Obviously, she she's uh, took my words to heart when I told her to stop <laughs> uh, stop uh, stop messing about and maybe put a little bit of attention towards the race. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> she listened to you. Oh, it looks like uh, Joker just catching a little bit of curd there. Very well caught by Joker there to not uh, to not spin the car. But yeah, like you say, I think Sophia must have heard her and she uh, she she's putting her foot right down to the floor, setting personal bests, and especially you know will help her claim that P1. But uh, it looks like Kulios is not out of contention for that eighth place 
if Joko, you know, gets his chicane right and uh, oh, c catches a little bit of the grass, brings Kulios just that little bit closer to him. So uh, again, Kulios will be looking to try and uh, capitalise on Joker here. And a good performance from Kulios all in all. I know he struggles with kind of the more NASCAR style tracks, especially in uh, that Subaru. We all know how he feels about Monza. But um, yeah, I think he's doing pretty well, uh, improving every race. And uh, may look like he's on for uh, an eighth place here. Maybe I'm not sure how uh, that the, the BRZ is going to uh, fare next week with uh, yeah, the oval. Obviously, it top it, it it's already reaching a limit at 174 miles an hour. So he might uh, struggle a little bit with both fuel consumption and overall top speed uh, on the oval layout. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> if you know Kulios, you know he doesn't really like NASCAR style tracks and that's one of the reasons why he doesn't like Monza um, and before you say we know that Monza isn't a NASCAR track Kulios thinks it is um, <laughs> but um, yeah like you say that Subaru is going to be a bit of a handful next week and it looks like it's been a little bit of a handful today but he's just been able to control it just that little bit so he's not too far behind the drivers but a difficult card to handle on tracks like this yeah absolutely um, coming towards the end of the race now, Sarah. Um, not really that many on track battles or people that close together. Um, Sophia, for the last few laps, has it, been uh, really outpacing KD Kai almost, uh, almost second per lap for the last three laps or so. Um, who would you say your driver of the day is? Oh, that's a really difficult question. Um... I think that there's a few drivers definitely in contention and a few honourable mentions that we could say. Oh, LB Lewis going slightly off track and taking a sponsor board with him. Uh, very unfortunate there, does lose him a little bit of time to Sophie. But yeah, a very difficult... Um, oh, and also picking himself up a half a second penalty, which won't help But uh, on the penultimate lap. But, um, hmm, I think... I think Coach... You know, P4 is a, a brilliant finish from him. Pedro, you know, managing to get up to the uh, to the podium. I think, again, Sophie, LB, Racing. I think they're all in contention for driver of the day for me. Well, obviously, along the, the, the drivers like Sophie and Kade the Kai bringing the fight right to the end. But I think it's going to take this last lap for me to, to pick. But who would you say is yours at the minute, Kirk? I think it's almost certainly got to go to Pedro. Obviously, starting down, down at the bottom end of the uh, grid, uh, it showed real commitment and uh, commitment and uh, and pace to be able to finish, possibly still finish on the podium here tonight. Obviously, yeah, uh, or in a big mistake on the final lap, looks like he has it quite, uh, quite well sealed up. So you obviously got to, you got to give a. Uh, High credits to both Coach and Sophia for this race. Obviously, Sophia are in uh, P2. Um, obviously, unfortunately, losing Swizzy from this race early on. Uh, early on, that possibly prevented a three-way fight for the win. Um, but you can't take anything away from Sophia. She has managed to uh, have it clean for the most part, uh, avoid any major mistakes. Well, there was a few here and there. Um, and she's tried very well to win. Well, possibly win again. Uh, touch of wood, barring any big mistakes in the final lap. Um, I say coach, well, coach, very impressive drive. They obviously qualify, a very impressive qualified to qualify P4. We knew he didn't have the pace to catch the front runners here today, and although he couldn't quite maximise it by securing a podium, uh, P4 only finishing behind Pedro. Um, Certainly, is nothing to scoff at, and yeah, a very impressive drive as well. Oh, 100%. And uh, talking about last lap, it looks like Hartman has had a possible mistake or a possible spin because he did lose quite a lot of time to LB Racing. But um, yeah, unfortunate for Hartman, but again, he drove, he drove a brilliant race. Uh, as we see, Sophia on the last corner, on that banked corner, and uh, just like that gets it you know gets the win 
like you said earlier, it was a bit kind of close to call between Sophia and Katie Lukai, and like you say, I'm very unfortunate from Swizzy from a, a, what, a, disconnect, a disconnect point of view, but uh, that, that doesn't take anything away from Sophia. The pace that she's had today has uh, been quite remarkable. Like I said earlier, she's controlled the, the race. She's set personal best after personal best, but uh, as we join Pedro and uh, Coach going over the finish line now, I think Pedro, like you say, will be very happy with a P3 result considering where he started. And it just goes to show you don't always have to kind of qualify that close to the top. If you're on the right tyre and you're at the right place at the right time, the podium is definitely on the bugs. Absolutely, Sarah. Um, so probably my driver of the day there, Pedro. A very impressive drive here today. Um, yeah, I'd say pretty my top three would probably be Pedro, Sophia and then Coach my top three drivers of this event uh, you see him Hartman showed a very good resolve obviously we saw him spinning early on and going down towards the back of the pack um, to finish in front of Midnight Kulios and Joker he's done very well here um, but then obviously uh, unfortunate unfortunate uh, for both mid well for Midnight Ice especially obviously be expecting maybe a little bit more here today um but it just seemed like him and he and that or him in that mclaren didn't really have the pace to compete today no and i felt that in in my race as well obviously i'm driving the mclaren as well as you may have seen it's uh it was kind of a difficult car around this track it didn't quite feel like it had that top end speed to really kind of bring the fight to the other drivers but i mean all in all you know he picks up some some points which will definitely help in the championship you know all all places have points uh in the championship so definitely worth you know midnight sticking it out but yeah difficult race for midnight uh, a little bit of a spin picking up some damage and uh didn't quite catch if he went in to repair that damage or if he was kind of nursing it home but go uh, looking at it as well it looks like kulios unfortunately just wasn't able to catch joker in the end but um all in all I think uh, a really good race. You know, the drivers for the majority of the race, considering the pit stops as well, they were all really close to each other, which is uh, good to see. You know, it makes our job just that little bit harder to keep up with them and uh, keep up with all the uh, all the moves, all the battles. But uh, what did you think about that race, Kirk? <laughs> Certainly much more interesting than the one I drove. In the blue lobby, um, we saw well, we all, throughout that race we saw a battle for uh, the podium positions. Um, obviously, unfortunately, we lost Swizzy. As I say it's never really good to lose a driver due to this, due to uh, connection problems. Um, yeah, very good race. Um, I certainly enjoyed it. Not sure about you, Sarah. Um, and I think right drivers got the right results. Um pace consistency as always was rewarded and uh good results come to uh the good the good drivers if you know what i mean <laughs> yeah exactly good to, good results come to the the people that you know work hard for it and um i think all of the drivers worked hard for their results today obviously like unfortunately a few people getting kind of caught out or um, making a few mistakes in this around this track is very easily done. Uh, I know I made a few in my race, so uh, I know how hard it, this track can be at times. But yeah, I'm pretty proud of all of the drivers today in the the red lobby. Uh, they had a, a pretty good race, and uh, I'm excited to see how they do. Obviously, on the oval next week, it's gonna be it's gonna be a different style of racing I think we're going to see next week. Obviously, a little bit more kind of leaning into the NASCAR style of racing. I think Slipstream is definitely going to be king. You know, if you don't have Slipstream, probably not going to make a, a lot of progress. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, the race from the driver's perspective next week. But, yeah, all in all, a pretty good race. We'll just quickly run down the results before we... Uh, hand over to the drivers themselves for the, the podium room. But, um, Kirk, if you want to take the top five, and then I'll take the bottom five. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what can I say? What can you say about the results today? I know I, I maybe maybe talking a little bit of, of uh, rubbish uh, when it when it, when it, uh, when it comes between the second pit stops, but uh, and uh, the overcut really worked out for Sophia today. Sophia 
taking P, well, taking the win today, and they're doing very well. Uh, K De Kai, obviously the the driver who did qualify on pole, um, didn't quite have the tie wear to compete in the end. Obviously taking P two, not a million miles away, but uh, I'm sure they were sure the win was on the cards. I'm sure he can't be too disappointed in with uh, second place. Then we have Pedro in P3 as my driver of the day. Very, very impressive drive from him. Uh, I probably probably wasn't expecting much more and was right where he wanted to be. Um, and then P4, we have Coach. Coach obviously qualified P4, held his position throughout the race. And although he was in that battle for, uh, for the podium position, uh, P3, um, it's, uh, it seemed like... Uh, Pedro just had it was a little bit too quick for him on today. Today, well, for today, <laughs> and then P5 we have uh, so Sophia, very impressive drive from her. Sarah, you want to take away the rest of it? Of course, I can. Uh, thank you very much. Then we have in P6 we then have LB Racing again, fought hard, very hard for the majority of the race, made uh, a few mistakes, and uh, unfortunately, you know, towards the end of uh, of the race. Did pick up a few penalties. Would did, did drop him behind Sophie, but again, a uh, a pretty good race from uh, LB Racing side of things. But in P seven, we then have Hartman, and uh, you know, towards the the start of the race, didn't make too much progress. But towards the end, you know, he was fighting in that battle that we saw kind of stretch to the the podium. So you know, definitely, I think next week on the Oval Star, we'll definitely see. Apartment shine a little bit more in that Corvette. In P8, we then had Joker in that Ferrari. And again, a very, like I said during the race, that Ferrari is a handful around this track. So uh, I think Joker, unfortunately, got, did get caught out a few times with uh, the the harshness of that Ferrari. But um, I'm sure, again, he'll be looking towards next week for a, a, a better result. But nevertheless, his second ever Nighthawk racing event so he did pretty well. In P9, we then have Kulios in that BRZ. Um, like Kirk alluded to earlier, not the easiest car to handle around this track. Well, around any track, to be fair. So Kulios definitely, you know, driving the socks off of that Subaru. And uh, I think he was definitely on for a slightly higher result. But nevertheless, P9 is a good result. And in P10, rounding out the grid, we then have our very own co-founder, Midnight ISO, like we said, unfortunately, did make a few mistakes, and uh, the McLaren not treating him the the kindest round uh, the the road course today. But again, the we've got the we got the oval next week, and uh, hopefully the McLaren will treat him just that little bit better. And then, unfortunately, obviously, it did not finish from Swizzy. Very unfortunate to see him disconnect, but hoping that he's back next week. And uh, hoping that he can bring the fight on the oval. But yeah, that does conclude round four at Daytona Road Course. And we now move on to round five at the Daytona Oval. Again, like I said, a different style of racing that we're going to see next week. But interesting nevertheless. So um, we will see you next week. But firstly, we'll hand you over to the drivers and uh, hear a little bit from them about how their race went. But it's... Uh, Bye from me and Kirk, and we will see you next time for round number five. Round four at Daytona. Um, very much um, happy with the uh, with my performance, really. Even though I felt like I left a bit on the table across all um, all the races and the qualifying session. Um, well, starting off with the sprint, um, although I'm not 100% displeased with the results, uh, I once again failed to make some moves at the right time, and I do feel like uh, the sprint races are not only all about the uh, the pace you have, but also the timing when you make moves on the other drivers, etc. Um, and I felt like, once again, I was lacking in that aspect, and I went from possibly challenge, challenging for a podium at some point to um, finishing down in sixth, which, you know, um, it isn't a bad result, but I felt like I could have done better. And uh, yeah, I had a really nice battle with Sophie at the end for P5. 
Um, yeah, congratulations to her. Um, in terms of qualifying, uh, P8 wasn't ideal. Felt like I left a little bit on the table, but at least it allowed me to start on the mediums and kind of ease off the pressure a little bit and let me do my race without many um, without many issues. And yeah, in the end, I'm just over the moon with, with the podium. Even though I felt like I left a little bit of space on the table, I know I'm capable of a bit better. Uh, I'm just over the moon to be able to uh, get a podium after the disconnect at Monza, which didn't really allow me to fight for any points. Um, and yeah, uh, felt like I did everything I should have really done there. Uh, and obviously, I mean, I got the podium as well due to uh, Swizzy's unfortunate disconnect, which I don't think I would have otherwise got. And Sophie and Katie, the guy, were just in a league of their own. So um, it was always going to be very difficult to catch up to them. And yeah, uh, very much uh, happy to get some points back. And I'm already looking forward to uh, Daytona Oval. Yeah, it's definitely going to be a, an interesting race. Um, yeah, very much happy and proud of everyone. Next race, Daytona Oval.